right now. How are you doing with this now? What's your feel? There, a little, that's good. A little bit's all you should be doing better because we only learned a little bit more and, and we'll keep adding to it. And that's, that's totally fine. Um, have people had to restart or no? Okay, that's good. That really is. And tell me, when you restarted, did you get back to the place you were quickly? Yes. Trust me, it always works like that. Remember, it's never worth fixing anything in 3D. It's always worth starting over. There are no exceptions to that. Um, I'm gonna, as you saw, I crashed before. I, I'm gonna go back to this rock and get us back to that point where we were doing the point manipulations and show you some more stuff with it, which should get you further. Uh, I'm gonna pick a different primitive this time. Um, I will pick a, um, I will pick a sphere. Um, and I will try to give it what I think it needs. Uh, you know what, we'll start it like that and see how it goes. I'm gonna go to wireframe, turn on my real-time shaders, OpenGL, and let's go back to point mode. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is flatten the bottom, selecting all those points with a square selection, and um, I'm gonna show you another keyboard equivalent that I tend to use a lot, which is the F key. The F key frames whatever I selected. So if I'm in this window and I hit F, I zoom right down there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make that flat, so I'm gonna scale it, uh, and basically, like that. Uh, which is good, that gets me closer to where I want to be. Now I have to do this to a few other sides of this thing. So let me go over here. Um, I wanna look at some other selection modes too, because we've mostly been using this square selection mode. If I go here under select, under tools, you'll see that my function keys, F7, F8, F9, F10, these actually have things that correlate directly to Photoshop selection modes. Um, F7 is rectangle, but F8 is lasso. So if I'm out here um, and I hit F8, my mouse pointer changes. And I can then, holding down my shift key, I can just pick points like that. Uh, if I look over here, I see that I want this one too, and this, and this, and maybe that, and that. And let's try to flatten that selection. I'll use that same scale. This is a good example of where local and global scaling is gonna make a difference. That's probably not what I want. I'm gonna undo it with Control Z. Uh, I'm gonna turn on my scale by just clicking that. And let's try a global reference. Global might not be what I want because it's gonna move the whole thing like that. And I can see I'm missing a couple points so let's control Z that again, and I'm gonna go around and get the points I'm missing, which I can see right there. Uh, I know F8 is my lasso, hold down my shift key. I'll add this, I'll rotate a little, and add this and this. And I'm gonna hit the F key again, because the F key shows me my selection, F, 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 F. That looks better. Now let's try the scaling. Still not where I want it to happen from, um, there's a scaling mode called COG, which stands for center of gravity. COG makes an artificial center point around whatever I picked. So I'm gonna click COG and watch what happens to my transform manipulator. Bing, that's what I want. That's more like what I'm looking for, right? Now I'm gonna hit the A key, which frames up everything so I can see my object, and I'm gonna hold up my rock and I'm gonna take a look at how we're doing here, the bottom I like, uh, this side is kind of curved. I've got to start to pull some points. Um, let me go around like this. Um, I'm going to show you another tool. It's actually a very powerful tool. It's one the guy in the video was using, uh, the M key. The M key lets me quickly grab anything. So I have my mouse right now. I'm going to hit M and hold it down, and my mouse pointer is going to change. And now anything I click on, I can kind of just pull. Oh, like that. Mm -hmm. And watch, when I release it, I'll go back to my other mode. Um, the M key also starts to show us, the M key can pick anything. I can pick um, lines and what have you. And let's look at the other modes. Well, you know, I was in point mode, I should say. Let's go to edge mode. When I go to edge mode, I'm now, if I hit F7, I'm now picking edges. And 
lassos are kind of a nuisance for edges, but they have another mode called draw through. F9 lets me draw through and hold down my shift key and I can then pick particular parts. So having picked that stuff there, and I'm gonna hold down my shift key and get the other parts I want here. Oh. We'll see if that's too much, although I bet that's probably okay. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and use my S key to pan around here so I can get a better selection. And we'll grab those ones and that. And I can see up here I selected too much. I'm gonna use the control key to deselect a little. Good. And I bet you that's right. I I'm gonna try to move it um, down here in this view. Where did I miss one? On the bottom right, the bottom right. Down here? Oh, down here, let's take a look. You know what, let me hit, hit the F key because that will frame up the selection. And I can then see where we are. That one you're thinking of? Okay, I'm gonna hit F9, which lets me draw through, hold down my shift, and hopefully that got it. Thank you, that's, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, let me try to translate it to see if it is the part I want it to be, which it is, good. Uh, now I'm thinking of my rock here. We have this flat bottom, we have this sort of top. I'm gonna to rotate this whole selection a little bit like that, and maybe I'll twist it on this face a little bit too. And maybe I'll scale the whole thing as well. Ah, go to the scaler. Um, global COG, I might not want, because it's gonna do it across like that. I'm gonna try local COG, which does it relative to the actual selection itself, which is yet another of these modes. And if I want to as well, I can hit the M key anytime I want and move things around a little bit if I want to randomize them a bit, let's say. Like that, like that, like that, like that, and like that. Um, okay, let me show you one other mode of selecting. And I also want to show you that if I go back to my modes, object mode, the object selected, point mode, whatever point selection I had before should still be there and edge mode should still be my edge selection. Um, I'm gonna go to polygon mode, and now I'm picking polygons. I'm gonna hit F9, oh, like that. And I'll get different results depending what I pick and how I move it. Like again, if I'm trying to match this up, let's say I'm gonna scale that selection, like that, yeah, actually that works. And I'll probably rotate it in this view like that a bit and maybe translate it out like that, and check it up here and see where things are. Uh, also, just so you know, um, polygon is the only mode where I can poke holes easily. If I hit F9 and hit delete, I actually make a hole. See that? I can undo it too, and, and also just so you know, and we'll go into this at a different time, everything you do to your objects is always being recorded. Under this selection window right here, this is an entire history of everything I've done to that object. And if I want to, I can actually go back and find those things, but we'll, we'll talk about that at another time. Uh, for now, if you just try to, with the rocks you're modeling, try to use points, edges, and polygons, and scale, rotate, and translate the parts to get them into the shape of the rock, Give that a go and see how it works, okay? I'm gonna... When I'm in polygon mode, I'll do it quick. We'll go to polygon mode, I'll hit my S key. Um, I'll select, uh, I'll, you know what, let's say I wanna select every other one up here just to make it a little more complicated. Go like that, go like that, go like that, and go like uh, that. And then I hit the delete key. Yes. If you do it with points and edges, you get different results. But you will see. Remember, again, you get lost, just start again. You'll get back there very quickly. When you master this, we'll get to the techniques about how we put in more detail, which are called subdivision techniques. But see how this goes mastering-wise, okay?